Hello, botters. I'll try and make this quick. I got asked by a few people to uh, show what's happening now that we're in the middle of the December crash. Uh, so here's what's going on with the four bots I have. Two of them have been held long term. Two of them I consider pretty short term. The short termers are suffering. The long termers, not as much. Uh, at the end of the day, everything is now pretty much at a lower price than what I bought it for. But we'll look at Veracity, for instance, which is one of the longest held ones here. These two are, and sort of go with that one to start with, because this is a classic example of the bot working perfectly. Yeah, this is roughly, I spent this much buying, and getting into this position between Veracity and BTC as the profit coin. And uh, as you can see, it's now, that position is lost $51. The price of what I bought Veracity at has gone below what it is now. Uh, yeah, sorry, the price now is below what I bought it at, but because it's wiggled and got me 1700 worth of BTC, it's, uh, which is this much BTC, is how much it's earned me in the time, which is about this much current in current value, uh, the position is currently worth 3400 So that's still giving me sort of, I don't know, six, oh, there you go, $640. I'm still in profit at this point. If I got out of here, I'd be walking away with $640 in profit in the form of BTC being held in my wallet. This I call this double jeopardy. <laughs> a lot of people uh, will make most of the time their profit coin, this right hand side one, USDT. Then once you've made the profit, it's a stable coin sitting in your wallet and it's only the, the price of the quote coin, this left hand coin, that really matters. Uh, I've gone double jeopardy on it and been building up in BTC because I think the long-term life of BTC is to go up and up and up to closer to 100,000 kind of thing. And so I've been amassing BTC, not US dollars. Uh, and so therefore with BTC crashing and uh, the whole market sort of crashing, I'm getting a double whammy. But at the same time when things go up, most of the time I get a double up uh, without being in any of the leveraged coins. This is the closest I can get to leveraging without actually, you know, doing a leveraged coin. Because uh, it, it doubles, it double whammies. Now, at times, VRA might go down and BTC goes up and I get it that way, or they both go up, or at the moment they both go down. Um, but because I've held them for long enough and they were high wigglers, that's what I want. I need at least, I, I demand at least 0.67% a day or I sack them. Uh, then that's what they've been doing and they've got this much in profit. So as much as, look look at the price here, you know, that's what I bought it for. It's lower than, um, than that at the moment. That's where my loss is coming from. It's done all this in the meantime. Um, and I'm technically still in profit, but if I get out now, then yeah, you know, like it's generated me 1700 worth of, of BTC, but I make a loss on, on the VRA itself. And so it offsets and that's exactly the point of the buy. If I get out right now on this one, I still make uh, 23% profit, um, and this one here, the other one, air swap, same thing, exposed against BTC, currently down by, you know, that much, uh, which is only like 10 bucks, um, but I paid 20, call it 2300 to get into the position, and I'm still at 3300 so this is still up $1,000, even though the initial funds, the value of the BTC and air swap combined, um, is currently down. If I had that exact same amount, the price it right now, I'm down 11 bucks, but because I hold this much and this much, and I've accumulated this much BTC, it's worth about this much in today's dollars. Now the thing is, of course, if BTC turns around and goes up in value, then this much BTC here goes up in value with it, and the profit on this chain, on this bot, goes up with it. If this was US dollars, or USDT, none of the price, BTC's price would not matter, but because I've decided to expose myself to it, it does matter. Uh, there was, I had one USDT coin, it was Uno, I sold out of it four days ago, because uh, it had stopped wiggling. It had, for the, over two weeks, it had hardly made any days where it made my 0.67% return, uh, which is about a dollar value of about 20 bucks. It had hardly made, I think it made it two days out of 16 or something, so I fired it. And so it was only four days ago I got into uh, oh, likes, it's an exchange, um, and uh, that probably wasn't <laughs> the smartest move. I probably should have stayed out. Um, but this one was wiggling okay. Then it started wiggling even more, and now it's dropped out. The other thing that sort of made me think I was safe is that it had sort of come down quite a ways, and BTC had stopped really 
getting down too much. But now we're getting this wave, this slow wave in behind of all the altcoins still going down and uh, Bitcoin sort of stabilized. Same with this one. I got into this one 30 days ago. That was kind of at the beginning of this uh, sort of downward sort of um, trend for, at least for these guys, these guys started making, you know, it wasn't long before Boomer came down. Um, I just move that to one month kind of thing. But I'm, I'm not that fast with this because I, I intend to hold both of these. I think both of these are decent altcoins. They're sort of like, I think they're number three and number four, or no, number three and number five. I think um, USDT sits in the middle there. Uh, so, you know, they're not bad coins to hold. It's just, I, I, they didn't have very long to earn any wiggle. I don't need 162 bucks. It got into it and sort of dropped out all, you know, within a, a very short time, up, down, up, down. But it, it spent most of its time out of the wiggle. Also, because this is a long-term holder thing, I don't have as many lines on it. Um, maybe I should, uh, because this thing does obviously bounce up and down a lot more. If, again, if it's sold with USDT, this would, no, would not be as bouncy. If it was BNB against USDT, this would not be as bouncy. But they're against each other. So it's like two boats kind of tethered together with a rope um, and uh, you know uh, as opposed to another like like this one the the likesy one is is a boat tethered to the shore um, so the shore doesn't move uh, but the boat goes up and down whereas with you know when, with what I'm doing with these other ones it's like two boats on an ocean when the ocean gets choppy um, or the ocean goes low tide or the ocean goes high tide they they stick with each other kind of thing they, they get thrown around both ways uh, double jeopardy. So there you go. Um, all up, these two that I held for two months that I've had had in the plan um, in these bots for a while are still both in profit. Um, this one by a thousand bucks, despite all this chaos. And you know, if I had been the kind of person that watches the market a lot more and everything, but I've got a positive outlook on on all of these. Uh, I don't think this is the end. I think this is some sort of lull. It could be the Mount Gox dump of on the 20th of November when all that stolen BTC re-entered the market. It could be all these new um, ETFs that are out there. And so now there's now sort of all these professional traders that weren't there before with big sums of money coming in with future data. I don't even fully understand that entirely. I listen to other people as well, but there's a whole bunch of reasons why it might be happening. Um, but I'm not good enough to tell you why. So I sit there and go, okay, but my, I just have the positive vibe that I think these things, this will be a temporary December sort of thing and uh, maybe late December, January, February, March kind of thing, this will all turn around and go back up again. And because I'm exposed to BTC, this is all gonna come back up again. You might choose to be a bit safer and put everything in USDT. Most people do. Uh, and it was my plan when I get my fifth bot on there to have two USDTs, two BTCs, and, and this one um, as a sort of a balance out kind of thing. That's where I'm at at the moment. They're all out of range because the price has dropped. I could regrid, uh, but then you start selling things at a loss because you know I've bought all these. This is my like my buy line kind of thing. Um, I followed it up here and from from here down it's gone bye 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 bye. But this allows for like almost like a fifty percent, around about a fifty percent drop in price before I'm out of the money. Uh, so it's gone down, what, 60% or something? You know, it's gone from, there you go, like 1,100, whatever it is, down to uh, in the 59. So you were looking at sort of 50%. So that's obviously more like a 40% sort of grid there. So if it falls 40% from its top down to here, I'm still generally covered. It gets more than 40%. You know, there's only so much protection you can get with a bot. I could make the grid bigger. I would either have to therefore have less money on each line and therefore make it less profit when it is wiggling inside or I would need more money uh, in order to make more lines holding the same amount of, you know, like say I've got 30 bucks on each one, then I, I'd need more money. I need uh, to be able to fill in more lines at $30 to be able to stay within this range. And, and that's just, you know, not what I've got set up for at the moment. So uh, there you go. Um, I'm still in profit, basically. Uh, 500 bucks all up, which I know is, is not fantastic, but considering this one's lost 20% and this one's lost 17%, uh, and all up, uh, and this one would be at a loss if I sold it and didn't hodl it or didn't bot it, and this one would also be selling at a loss. So literally every four four of them, uh, from purchase price to sale price right now, would be a loss. But I'm still in profit. Um, not a huge profit, but you know, like I said, I'm waiting for it to turn around. 
could be wrong. This could be the big crash, and I'm gonna, you know, be in a crypto winter for a while. Um, but we'll see. I, I don't think it is. Um, and that's and my overall belief is is in BTC, and that's why um, I've got them against that. And, and if and when BTC, well, when BTC turns around, um, these two are gonna. You know, scoop back up again in their profit value because it counts the BTC as part of the position. Um, and when BTC goes up, tends to rise all boats. So I expect, I definitely expect Sol to be back up at a two fifty uh, in the not too distant future. Uh, Binance will, all, I expect, will stay around. It's, it's, you know, get back to its its previous highs as well. This one's a bit of a new before me, so I'm waiting and seeing on that one. But again, the problem, so the problem with these two, the reason they're in red is they did not have much time in order to wiggle up some extra profit because that was in there such a short time. These two had the time, that extra month that these guys got over this one, uh, but, you know, two months. So, you know, if you buy into a market and then it tanks, well, you don't have that much protection. If you buy into a market when it's kind of just going sideways or even going up, but particularly even just sideways, uh, and can stay in there for a little while, You've, you've got the protection of, of what the money over in the, the pot uh, gives you to give you extra profit in that position. Anyway, I hope I didn't crap on too long. Um, there's the upside and the downsides of bots. All right, take it easy.